Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to our weekly recap video where I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions that came through on last week's videos. We did a lot of fun projects, a lot of fun spring flowers. It was just a really great week and we are just going to jump right into the questions. The first video was planting more spring color and in that video I planted up a couple of window boxes utilizing boxwoods from other containers. And then there were two other pots that were nearby that I planted up as well. And it was just a really fun project to get done and it looks really fresh and clean and ready for spring. Uh, first question was from Marcy. Do you ever go back after filming and deadhead all the pansy flowers to help establish a good root system? I don't do that, especially on annual flowers. I just let them do their thing. I know that sometimes people will tell you, like on lavender, I think some professionals will tell you when you plant it, cut the blooms off so that it can establish a good root system. But in that case, you're dealing with a perennial flower that you want to have in your garden for many, many years. Annuals, we're just planting for, you know, a season or just for, you know, a short time. Uh, so I don't worry about it as much. Uh, Martha said, the window boxes are so cute. Thank you. Are the boxwoods next to the left square planter dead? They looked so brown. They are not dead, but they look very sad. What happened is it was October this last year. We were having nights in the like low 40s ish. And then we had one night that went down to nine degrees. Nothing in our yard was ready for that sort of temperature swing. And we had just trimmed our boxwoods because 40 degree nights, that's still a great time to trim boxwoods. Usually they have a couple of weeks after that time to acclimate to the colder temps before it gets really cold so that it doesn't hurt them. But in this case it did. And it just fried the tops of a lot of our boxwoods. It also, all the leaves on the trees were frozen in place. We did and get hardly any fall color here. It was kind of a sad fall, but I should be able to trim that little layer of dead fried stuff off and they should reflush just fine. I'm hoping. Uh, Mary said, maybe you've covered this in another video, but how much can Carex be cut back? I'm never sure if it can take significant trimming or not. So Carex are those little grasses that were in the square pots and usually I don't have to cut them fully back. Uh, I can just clean them up and cut out anything that's dead around the base and then maybe trim some of the leaves, some of the like dead tips off of them. Uh, because did I just say they're an evergreen grass? I can't remember. I say so many words. Anyway, um, typically I don't have to cut them all the way back. Sometimes I do though, and they usually flush back just fine. And I'll just cut them back like I do any other perennial grass and leave like little stubs like this tall. And they usually flush back fine. Uh, T. Coleman said, I can never find boxwoods that small. How were how small were they when you planted them? Um, they were a one gallon size, which I think are pretty, I mean, this is just based off of my parents' garden center, but we're able to get one gallon boxwoods in really easily. So I'm not sure. I would just maybe uh, keep your eye out this spring. Uh, Tracy said, do your kangaroo bags have the hard bottoms? Yes. Have you had any breaking or ripping of the handles? Occasionally we will. Well, you saw at the end of the video, I was trying to tug on that bag. If you, that was full of too much weight. And if you do that repeatedly over and over and over again, of course, eventually it's gonna weaken the straps and you'll eventually break them. If you're doing everything proper and not weighing the bag down too much and such, uh, or dragging it around when there's too much weight in there, it'll last a lot longer, of course. But I would recommend if you're going to buy a bag like that, always buy the one with the hard bottom. Honestly, they last so much longer than the ones that don't have a hard bottom. Uh, Rose said, love that crisp yellow blue combo. Garden Answer is teaching me to develop some color palette self-control. Oh, good luck with that. I barely have self-control. Every year I tell myself to stick with two colors, but then I still end up with a noisy symphony, symphony of everything. Will I ever learn? Um, that's just something, I don't know. I think every year my um, taste or my style or my mood is a little bit different. And some years I'll be very restrained with my color choice. And some years I just want all the color. And I think any way you decide to do it is fine. As long as you think it's pretty and it brings you joy, that's what it's about. So just keep doing you. Uh, next question, Rem Ramabu. Are you ever going to use that pink gomfrina wreath that you made? I completely forgot to put it out for Valentine's Day. I have it, it's still in great condition um, and it's still on the high shelf that I put it on right after I was done making it. Uh, I can't believe I forgot to take it out. So I will find some at some point a use for that wreath. Uh, Dana said, you still have your velvet covered amaryllis. You can see them behind the boxwoods. Are they still blooming? Um, so those two, I had, I had a whole bunch of the wax and velvet covered amaryllis. Most of them were blue, uh, done blooming by like the end of January, but I have two left. 
that they sent up one bloom stock right around Christmas, New Year's time, and now they're sending up a second one. So I think I'm gonna have blooms in April, and sometimes I'll have emeralds that do that. So it's kind of a fun extended treat. Emma said, why did you cut the ivy? So I cut the ivy because the ends were kind of tattered and they had brown edges on the, on, on the leaves, and so I did that just to clean them up a little bit. They'll grow back quickly. Uh, Katie said, now that you have that new land, is it possible that you could build a new house on that land? What is your big picture that you're wanting to do with both properties? Can you link these and have a pathway between your properties? Will it just be a big field for only growing or Hartley? Um, so we did a video, we'll link it down below, kind of introducing the new land and kind of talking through our plans and our thoughts on it. Of course, everything is subject to change and our ideas and things evolve as we get started in projects. But at this time, what we want to have happen is I do want my big garden for cut flowers and, and pumpkins and gourds. You guys, I was going through my seeds last night and I realized that I, I have 25 different pumpkins and gourds that I want to grow this year. So that's going to take up an enormous, enormous amount of space out there. I also have 22 varieties of sunflowers. So I don't know. I was texting my sister pictures of all my seeds and she was like, well, that escalated quickly. I'm going to have that whole land full of garden very quickly. Our plans are plants. Plants, plants, plants right now. Uh, Grace said, I love the color combination. I noticed in this video and some others, you have drip line in your pots and window boxes. I wonder how you hook them up to a water supply. Do they water from the bottom up in your pots? Obviously not in the window boxes. How do you hook those up? So we did a video when we set up our drip system to those containers. We will link it down below for you. Um, basically, just in kind of a summary, those window boxes are connected to our irrigation system on the west side of our house. So we have a pipe connected into the system that runs the length of the west side of the house. Then we drilled a hole in, <laughs> through our house. We have a um, pipe going through our crawl space to the other side where the window boxes start. And then we adapt it to quarter inch. So it's half inch tubing all the way up to there. That's where the water's coming from. And then we adapt it to quarter inch tubing and we have that run like kind of underneath one of the pieces of siding. And then it kind of pops into a window box, does its thing and it, you know, we've got emitters in there and then we run another solid piece to the next window box and so on. Anyway, watch that video. Hopefully it will help eliminate some confusion. And the last question from this particular video was from Dazzle Them For Me. How is the garden center doing during this crazy time? Have you guys had to close or make any changes. I hope all is well. Everything is going fine with my parents' garden center. The name of their company is Andrew Seed, and the garden center is actually not even the biggest part of their business. It's the seed side that's the big part of their business. They sell seed to farmers. So they're firmly on the necessary to stay open list um, because farmers need to still grow things. I mean, we still need feed for livestock and food for us and, you know, all that, that sort of thing. So that's still going on. They have really tightened up, though, on everything around them, like they're offering curbside service. So people can call in, um, order whatever they want and pay over the phone and my parents will load it right into their cars, car so nobody even has to get out. They also have hand san sanitizing stations set up. Um, and for any employee that works there, if they have anything so much as a sniffly nose, my parents are making them stay home. Um, they actually have one employee that recently was traveling and so they asked him to stay home for a little while. So they're doing everything they can to make sure everybody stays safe, but we still need the farmers to grow things. So um, anyway, they're doing fine. Next video was pruning and fertilizing my hydrangeas. And I just took you around my garden in that video and showed you how I was pruning up all my different types of hydrangeas and then I got them all fertilized. It's a really great time of year to do that in the spring once you see the buds start to swell up. Um, anyway, if you have any questions about how to do that, I would recommend watching that video. Uh, first question was makeup by Enya Garcia. What time of year is best to cut them? I did this right at the end of summer when my hydrangeas were already dried up. Is that a bad thing? Um, so if you're just deadheading them, you can do that in the fall. That's totally fine. You just want to make sure, especially if you're not sure what kind of hydrangea that you have, just cut right below the bloom, not down into the stem. Um, because some hydrangeas, and I explained this in the video, some bloom on old wood, some bloom on new wood. So if you were deadheading a type of paniculata or arborescence hydrangea, those bloom on new wood, and it's okay to trim those a little bit more aggressively because they bloom on new wood, you're not gonna be accidentally cutting off buds. If you have got a macrophylla, serrata, or oak leaf type hydrangea, those are the three you need to be more careful with because they bloom on old wood. So like this year, those three type of hydrangeas will be blooming 
from buds that they formed on last year's wood. So if I went out there at like late fall last year or even this spring and cut them too far down into their branch, I could possibly be cutting off blooms for this year. So you just wanna be careful of that. The only reason I leave my um, hydrangea blooms on my plant is because I use them for decorating projects. I don't particularly like the look of them during the winter to see the big brown blooms on them, uh, but that's why I leave them. But it's totally fine to deadhead them after they're done blooming so you don't have to look at those all winter if you don't want to. Next question, I pruned my limelight topiary hydrangea during the fall and after seeing your video, I don't think it was the right time to do so. Is it possible I killed it? Probably not with a limelight. Limelights are incredibly resilient and they're tough plants and they're a type of paniculata, so they bloom on new wood. Um, if it was really late and you uh, um, pruned it right before it got really, really cold, I mean, it may, it can open up the plant to a little bit of winter damage. Spring is usually the better time to do it, but I would just go out there and just kind of rough up the bark on one of the stems or like look for buds. Look for buds first. If you see buds, you're great. If you don't see anything going on, rough up the bark a little bit, like with your fingernail or with your pruner. If you see green underneath the first layer of bark, then there's still life in the plant, um, but you're probably fine. Uh, Nancy says, I live in Montana zone four and have many deer that live in our area. A neighbor has Annabelle hydrangeas that seem to do well. Are there um, any other varieties that you might suggest? So Annabelle's are a type of arborescence hydrangea. If you live in a zone four, it's best to do arborescence or paniculata because they are very winter hardy and if they sustain any winter damage, they'll still bloom for you because they bloom on new wood. Um, so try Incrediball. Incrediballs are awesome. There's Invincible rubies. There's um, you can do limelight, you can do little lime, limetta, zinfandel, quick fire, little quick fire, firelight. There's a whole bunch of beautiful hydrangeas that can withstand zone four and perform for you. I don't know about the deer thing though. Do you know if there are any hydrangeas, Erin, that are resistant to deer? I don't think so. Probably not. Probably. Uh, Carolina said, can't you pick a place where you really want blue hydrangeas and change the soil? there for some more acidic. I'm just sad that you really like blue hydrangeas and can't grow them as they're my favorite. And I really wish that I could. It's just, it's not worth the effort in our area. We are so high pH um, that in even our water is pH, high pH. So even if I really work hard at trying to acidify my soil, it's just getting washed away every time we water. And I've tried so many times and it's just not worth it. I even try it in containers and I'm gonna try it again. But like I said, our, even our water is high pH. So even when we're watering containers, it's leaching out the acidity, but I think I can control it a little bit better in containers. So I'll give it a try again and we'll see what we can do. Uh, Jaime said, so I didn't transplant my hydrangea in the fall because I wasn't sure where I wanted it in my garden. I know now where I'd like to move it. Would it shock the plant to transplant it now in the spring? If I do transplant it, do you recommend still pruning it? This is the best time to transplant. Go ahead and do it. Um, just treat it like a brand new plant that you just got down at the garden center. Make sure you keep it well watered. You can lightly prune it if you would like to do that. I think now is a great time. Uh, Tamara says, my oak leaf hydrangea is very leggy. How do I get it to become more full, round, and bushy? I'm afraid to cut off the tops because they're showing lots of green leaves now. Is it too late to prune them? Yes, um, because they're showing lots of new growth. If you prune them right now, you will prune off blooms, which if that doesn't matter to you and you want to prune them down to encourage more base growth and more thickening, you can absolutely do that, but just know that you're going to be cutting off blooms. If you want to enjoy the blooms first, then do that, let it bloom, and then immediately after it's done blooming, cut it back. And that will hopefully help, help rejuvenate the plant and uh, create more growth underneath. And I would definitely think about fertilizing it as well. Uh, Sandy said, I love your standard hydrangeas. Are you able to show how you would make them into a standard? I have never done that in a video. I think it would be a really fun project to try. It would be a long-term project though, because I'd have to kind of start the video out with my plant and show the initial pruning. And then it would just have to be a like, update video process, which is totally fine. It's something might, we might do this year, but I'm gonna link a guide down below that you can read and it shows really good pictures on how you can create one yourself. And then the last question was from Grace Cakes. What about the Tough Stuff AHA hydrangeas, which I believe are Serrata hydrangeas. I do have some in my garden. I did not show them because I'm going to remove them. Um, I don't think I either, they're not in the right space. Like I don't think they're either getting enough sun they just have struggled where I have them. Uh, they did okay the first year. They were like so-so the next year. This last year they were like bleh. So I think I'm going to remove them. I'm going to try ahas and containers this year though. That's my plan. All right, next video was I went kind of crazy with pansies, which I kind of did. I planted a bunch of true blue pansies up in the front area by our like formal entrance with some ranunculus and 
Uh, I planted one container. It was a super fun project and it was a gorgeous day that day. Uh, Cecily says, this is random, but how are your blueberries? I always wonder how your containers are doing and would love more container updates from around your property or random projects. My blueberries are doing really great. Um, I've got them in containers still in the greenhouse right now. I have bought four more. They're still just sitting in their nursery cans outside the greenhouse right now and I plan on planting them up. I really would like to have a bunch of blueberries in our new area and we have to do I've explained this in videos before, we have to do our blueberries in containers because they like a more acidic soil situation and they just don't perform in our native soil. So they have to be in containers. I always plant two different varieties in the same large container and I would love to have like 10 or 15 containers of blueberries just lined up one day. Right now I just have a couple, but they're doing really good. They're starting to put on new growth. Uh, Marjorie said, what temperature do you put pansies outside? Uh, really quite cool. Like I've planted up several containers already. Like I think I planted up my first container the first part of February. They can withstand a lot. I think mine have been down near 20 degrees. And in the morning they might look a little bit like <laughs> a little cold, a little sad, but usually by mid to late morning they pick back up and look great and they're all doing great. I've not lost a single one. So pansies are one of the tougher ones that you can put out early. Uh, dot to trots low carb living said I planted pansies along my walkway last fall and they look amazing this morning. When should I look at replacing them? I'm in Virginia and it starts heating up in May. Also, does it make sense to pot them for the summer and keep them in a cooler place in my yard or just treat them as annuals or trash? So first off, keep them by your walkway until you're ready to plant some, either plant something new or when it gets too warm for them to be happy. And then at that point, you could do either one of those things. You could pot them up, put them somewhere cooler or just dig them up and plant them somewhere cooler. Um, and sometimes I have them do really well throughout the summer months here if I do that. Sometimes they struggle a little bit more. I mean, every year, it's a little bit different or you could treat them as annuals and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that so just do whatever you have either time for or um, yeah uh, Jacqueline says you live in Michigan right I just threw that question in there because I have seen so many questions about where we live lately we are in eastern Oregon in fact I was in the garden center a couple weeks ago and a gal was in there and she was like oh my gosh I thought you lived in Colorado and I'm like, nope, I'm here in Eastern Oregon. So anyway, that's where we're at. We're on the border of Oregon and Idaho. We live about 67 miles from Boise, Idaho. We're zone, formerly zone five. They're terming us as zone six now. So that's where we're at. Next question was, uh, do you sterilize recycled pots before reusing them? If yes, what is your technique? If no, why not? Um, so I mentioned in that video that I was saving all of those pansy containers to use for my seedlings that I have upstairs because I don't have enough room to grow all the seedlings that I want this year. I'm having to pot up the more cold tolerant ones like foxgloves, delphiniums, sweet peas. Those are all potted up and out in our cold frame now. Um, but I've been using those pansy pots because it's a great way to recycle them and a great way to save some money. Um, those I didn't recycle because they had fresh plants in them that had no bug issue that I could see, no fungal issue that I could see it's safest to sterilize them. I think you do one part bleach to 10 parts water, soak them in that, wash them up, let them dry, and then use them that way. And I always do that for um, other things that have maybe struggled with some kind of issue. You do not want that to perpetuate that problem. So that's always the safest bet. I haven't been doing that so far, haven't seen any problem yet. Uh, Coco said, do you always get 100% success when planting a lot, like in this video? We do get a fair amount of success, pretty high number of success, just because we have our irrigation figured out. And I think that is key. Like for example, I'm staring at our arborvita hedge that we have going on the west side. It's right in front of me. We planted 65 of those arborvitas on a 104 degree July day, which is really tough on any plant. And I think we lost one, maybe two, if I'm remembering right. But that ratio is pretty darn good when you're throwing out plants in those type of adverse conditions and really in that quantity. Like the more stuff you plant, the more likely you are to lose, you know, one or two. There is a bug flying around the lens. Hold on. Get, get. <laughs> Probably see that. Um, anyway, so I feel like as long as you have a way to uh, consistently irrigate anything that you're planting, you should have a fair amount of success with it. Uh, Stephanie said, your en energy has no boundaries. What do you do to wind down and relax to feel rested? I garden. I don't know. I garden. I don't know. Like yesterday, yesterday was Sunday. And when Benjamin was napping, like, you know, I could sit down and read a book. I do like to read. I like to knit. I like to play the piano. I like to cook. So those are all things I do like to do. Um, but I just spent my time puttering around in the greenhouse. I potted up some seedlings and it was just such a peaceful day. 
I don't know. I just love to be outside doing stuff. Uh, CJ said, how long will the tulip and ranunculus bloom? They don't seem to last long for all the work. Then they die and then you have to leave for a while. Um, it will be beautiful, but for how long? It'll be beautiful all spring long. Um, I put a tulip blend in there that kind of blooms, like they have slightly different bloom times, so they'll kind of be in succession bloom. And um, ranunculus usually lasts for the whole spring season for me, usually until I'm ready to pull them out for summer stuff. And pansies will last a really long time. So I expect it to look pretty good for a number of months. The next video was planting spring crops and I was really looking forward to doing that project. I always look forward to the first crops I get to plant out in the garden. And so I just went through some of the kind of normal spring crops that people plant. Um, it will be based very much so on your weather, whether or not you can get out, like what time you can get out in the year. Some years we can plant in February, some years it's toward the end of April. So I just feel really lucky that we were able to plant now uh, because we'll get things going, get things up. I'm super excited about it. Anyway. First question, do you ever give your garden tools a good clean? I mean, sterilizing them, do you think it's necessary? So typically the only times I clean my tools are at the end of the season, like when I'm getting ready to put them away for the winter, and then if I'm cutting anything that's diseased. So when I cut our crab apple, when I prune it, when it's got fire blight, then I'm trying to manage it. If I'm cutting something like that, I always clean the tools afterward um, because you don't want to spread that to something else. But that's typically the only time I clean my tools. They could probably stand cleaning more often. Next question was, have you sped up the basic presentation a bit? I feel it is not relaxing like that. It seems tense or hurried. I'm not really sure what you mean by basic presentation. Like, do you mean like the, the overall feel of the video or like the way I'm talking? Because I know when I get really excited, I'm naturally, I talk fast and I do things fast anyway. Um, so it's, it's hard for me to kind of slow that down. But when I get excited about stuff, it gets worse. So I'm sorry about that. So if I'm going fast, just know I'm extra excited. Uh, Linda said, I did not know you could get uh, put veggies in with flowers. Could you explain a little more of this, please? Absolutely. So putting veggies in your flower beds is one of the most like whimsical, magical things I think you can do. Like when you, when I'm walking around somebody else's garden and it's like a beautiful flower board, border and then I see like a red cabbage or whatever tucked in or like a tomato plant. For some reason, I think it's like the most happy, fun thing to see because it's out of the normal and it's, it's fine. Like wherever you have an open space of ground, if you want to toss some food crops in with your flower beds, like do it. Like how fun is that? Something just a little bit different and unique. And I also like to toss flowers in my raised beds. As the season goes on and I start pulling spring crops out, sometimes I'll pop zinnia seeds in here or there, or I'll do a whole bed of zinnias so I can have some cut flowers. It's just fun to mix it up. Uh, Kate said, I don't understand you not liking radishes. Have you tried them roasted? So I have not tried them roasted, but I did see so many comments below that video about how I need to roast them and try them that way. So I'm going to this year. I'm going to take your suggestions and give that a try. And I, I do like radishes on a very small scale when they're very young and haven't had a chance to get really hot yet. I don't really like the hot, sharp tasting radishes. Sandy said, what are the advantages or why do you use raised beds versus just planting directly in the, the ground? So there's a couple advantages to raised beds. One, I think they're pretty. You can like design your garden really nicely and keep, it's easier to keep things weed free when you have raised beds. Um, also, if you've got bad soil, if you have raised beds then you can fill them full of really good soil mixes and it's easier to keep your soil nice. And also there's the advantage of having them higher off the ground because there are raised beds that you can get or build that are standing. Like you can still garden if you have a bad back or bad knees or something like that and it's really hard for you to get down to the ground. It's such an excellent way to bring gardening up to a level where it's comfortable for you. And I think that's the key. And that's why we, like Aaron, Aaron is a really big proponent of like getting the proper tool or creating, like making it in a way, all the jobs that you do, put, making them more comfortable or more pleasurable, enjoyable, um, because that's what keeps the, I don't know, it keeps the passion alive. If it became a, a chore and it became hard to do, or it became physically, like you were physically unable to do things, then it wouldn't be as fun. So anyway, that was a tangent, but you can make raised beds taller so that it's more comfortable for you. Uh, Melody said, Melody Melody said, do you rotate your crops in your garden boxes every year? I do, so I just make sure wherever, like I planted my garlic last year, I don't plant it in the same bed or any allium crop. Like I always make sure onions and garlic get spread around in different spots as well as tomatoes get put in a different area. Um, so I do, I haven't really talked about it a lot, but I do make sure that I plant different stuff in different areas every single year. Kyle asked, what's the brand of the circular trellis with the ball on top. So I think you're talking about the four I have um, in four of the raised beds in there. Those are from Gardener Supply and they're called the Essex Round Trellis.
This mom's tail said, can I use that repellent for squirrels? So I would use the Repelzol rather than the Go Away. Repelzol has squirrels on the label, and I did find, I used this down at the garden center and it worked really well. I found though that creating a really strong aversion in the beginning was important. So I would apply it every three or four days for the first three weeks or so. And then I could start like backing off and doing once a week and then less amount of time. Plus the more you're watering in whatever area you're applying it, the more you'll wanna apply it because it doesn't hold up forever to a lot of watering. So keep that in mind. And then Judy said, what do you do with all your garlic and onions? We eat it, <laughs> eat most of them. I did give some away, like I gave a bunch to Chris last year. I handed some over the fence to our neighbors in a box last year. I actually see some of the garlic growing in their raised bed right now, which is amazing. Uh, so I do give some of it away, but we eat a tremendous amount of garlic and onions. And I'm still using off of, I've got I think one onion left and a whole, not a whole bunch, but enough garlic to get me through to July left. Last video was transplanting perennials to make way for a new pathway. And I just had some perennials I needed to move and it's a great time of year to do it. So I just wanted to show you my process, especially for those of you who've maybe never done it before. First question was, it would be amazing if you'd tell me what camera and microphone did you use to film? So for this one, I primarily used my vlog camera, which is a G7X Mark II, no microphone for this video. Um, that camera is not my favorite. I think it's the best one that's available, but sometimes it takes a long time to focus on things. Plus my lens looks perma dirty all the time and that's my own fault. When we did the video out at my parents' house doing some cleaning, at one part of the video, I set my camera up on the pathway because I thought it would be a cool shot to show me blowing <laughs> pathway clean. And it blew a bunch of dirt underneath the lens of the camera and we can't get it out. So we have since ordered a new camera, but who knows when it will arrive because I think right now Amazon is just sending out household essentials, which that's what they should be doing. Cameras don't matter. So until we get our new camera, anytime I use that one, it will look a little bit dirty. So anyway, um, that's the camera I primarily used for that video. Maria asked, did you remember to take your agapanthus out for winter? I did not take my agapanthus out and I think it might have survived. I mulched it up really heavily with leaves and then we had a really mild winter. I went in there though and just cleaned it up this past week and everything seems really firm about the plants. Like there's no rotting, they're not falling apart and I do see a little bit of green growth. So I am crossing my fingers that they actually survived our winter. Uh, Rory says, I have three Macrophylla hydrangeas in pots. I'm in zone 10 and this is their second season. They've all leafed out already, but I would like to put them in the ground. I was wondering if that's still possible or should I wait until they go dormant again in the winter? No, I would say go for it. Get them planted, keep them well watered and you should be great. Lori said, why did you insert a small piece of tubing instead of just using a coupler in the cut? I initially only went and got one coupler in the barn and I came back and realized I had accidentally cut the tubing in two spots that were about this far away from each other. So I went back and got two couplers and a little piece of tubing so that I could cut it and make the mend properly. Um, yeah, a cup, one coupler wouldn't have done it just because of that extra cut I made. Is it better to wait for the plant to break dormancy to transplant to another area? I have a number of perennials that I've been waiting that I've been waiting for them to wake up before I transplant. So it would be awesome if I can move them now. I think you could move them now just fine. Just make sure you water them in uh, and give them some fertilizer when they start breaking dormancy and you should be good. Rhonda said, I see there are times when you garden with gloves and times that you don't. Are you worried about possibly getting tetanus from working in the dirt? I'm rarely worried about getting anything when I'm working in the dirt. I think it's one of the healthiest things that you can do. Um, sometimes I wear gloves, sometimes I don't. It depends on the day, my mood, and really what I'm doing. Typically, uh, now I wear gloves a lot more when I'm using fertilizer. I don't typically handle fertilizer with bare hands because that's, that's not super healthy to do, no matter what the fertilizer is. And gardening does tear up your hands. So I've been trying to remember to wear my gloves a little bit more uh, because now like I'm giving Benjamin baths and stuff like that. Ever since I had Benjamin, like I wanna make sure that my hands don't feel like sandpaper on his soft little skin. So it's become more of a, something I think about a little bit more anyway. Barb said, I love when you speed things up, but could you tell us how much time it takes in real life? When I film a project, it can take anywhere from like two to four to five times longer than it takes me in real, real life, like if I'm not filming it. That transplanting project would have taken me under an hour had I not been filming it. So it took about two hours to do the whole project and film the whole thing. Some projects are very different though. Let me add that in, like planting spring crops, can take me all day to film that video and do that project. So it just depends on the, the project. That one wasn't a very big one. Elle Smith said the second variety of plant you moved had the name peony in it, which I thought the picture didn't look like a typical peony. However, when you kept saying day daylily, I was thinking that the foliage didn't look like what I have in my garden either. So it is a type of daylily, it's called Siloam P 
peony, double peony display, something like that. The name peony is in the name. It's a double peach colored daylily that's absolutely gorgeous. And I waited like three years to get my hands on those after they came out. I was so excited about them and I just, I'm super excited to have them in my garden because I think they're so pretty. Next question, which I actually saw this a couple of times, was about the Checkmark Trilogy Wygilla and when to prune it. So the Wygillas bloom on old wood, which means really you should be planting those type of plants in areas where you can let them get to their full size without needing to be pruned because they shouldn't need to be pruned unless there's something going on with it. If you do want to prune a Wygilla, you should do it immediately after they're done blooming, kind of like you would treat a lilac or forsythia. You let them bloom in the spring, as soon as they're done, you can do your pruning, and that way they still have time in that season to form their buds for next year's blooms. All right, last question is from Arby. I think that's how you say it. Uh, at time signature 849, is that heavy machi machinery I'm seeing? Yes, it is. So that's heavy machinery that was brought in by the guy who was helping clear out the area for our new fence on the new land. And so there were a bunch of like overgrown, shrubby, half dead plants and stumps from old trees that were in there. And so he brought in a backhoe and uh, I don't even know what the name of the other one is. There's two pieces of machinery out there that he used to help level and clear out the area. And you guys, the fence should be done this week. I put an update in our stories on Instagram and Facebook of what was going on out there just a couple of days ago and we're getting close so I'm super excited to show you. So that's it. That's all the questions from this last week. There is one last thing I wanted to talk about and that is our mail time videos. Uh, we did recently film a mail film a mail time video that we are going to put up but I think we're going to be putting those videos on our second channel which is called Garden Answer Highlights and the reason I want to do that is because I feel like we're needing to do them at a higher frequency now and I know some of you really like the mail time videos and you like seeing you know what other people send from different areas of the world or the country uh, but some of you don't like it and I really want to make sure that we keep our main channel focused on what it, we intend to focus on we intended to focus on which is gardening primarily I mean we'll throw in a little family stuff or other projects that are going on around the house but I want it to remain mostly gardening so I feel like the second channel is a really appropriate place to put our mail time videos so we will link that channel down below if you want to check that out. It was a big mail time. We had a lot of stuff to open and it is starting to rain now. So we are going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all have a really great week and we will see you in the next one. Bye.